Halloween, a night of ghoulish delights and spooky frights. Celebrated each year on the 31st of October, it's a time for costumes, candy, and creepy crawlies, but behind the playful facade lies a rich history, stretching back centuries. Our journey begins with the ancient Celts and their festival of Samhain. This wasn't just any celebration, it was a time when the boundary between the living and the dead was believed to be at its thinnest. Imagine a world where spirits roamed freely amongst us. The Celts believed this was possible during Samhain. It was a time of both fear and reverence, fear of the unknown, reverence for the spirits of their ancestors. They celebrated with bonfires, costumes, and rituals designed to appease the wandering souls. Join us as we delve deeper into the origins of this fascinating holiday. We'll uncover the stories behind the traditions we hold dear and explore how Halloween has evolved over time. For the Celts, Samhain marked the end of the harvest season, a time when they gathered the last of their crops and prepared for the long, harsh winter ahead. It was a time of transition, the beginning of winter, when the days grew shorter and the nights longer. The natural world seemed to wither and die as plants and trees shed their leaves and the landscape turned barren and cold. And it was during this time as the nights grew longer and colder that the veil between worlds grew thin, allowing the spirits of the dead to cross over into the world of the living. Imagine a world shrouded in mist and shadow, where the boundaries between the seen and unseen blur. The air is thick with the scent of burning leaves, a reminder of the cycle of life and death. This was the atmosphere of Samhain, a festival that celebrated the end of the harvest and the beginning of the dark half of the year, a time when the spirits of the dead were said to walk among the living, their presence felt in the chill of the night air. The Celts believed that these spirits could bring both good and bad fortune, influencing the events of the coming year. To appease them, they offered food and drink, leaving it out on their doorsteps as a gesture of goodwill and respect. Costumes were worn, often made from animal skins, to ward off evil spirits or to disguise themselves as one of them, blending in with the supernatural visitors. Bonfires blazed, casting flickering shadows on the faces of those gathered around, creating an eerie yet comforting glow. The warmth of the flames offered protection from the cold, but also served a symbolic purpose representing the light of hope in the darkness. Fire was seen as a purifying force, a way to cleanse the air of negative energy and to protect the community from harm. Saman was a time of great mystery and superstition, a time when the boundaries between the natural and supernatural worlds were blurred. It was a time when the living and the dead came face to face, and the fate of the coming year hung in the balance, determined by the actions and rituals performed during this sacred festival. As centuries passed and Christianity spread throughout Europe, ancient pagan traditions like Samhain were gradually absorbed into the new faith. The process was neither quick nor simple, but rather a gradual blending of beliefs and practices over many generations. The church sought to replace these pagan celebrations with Christian holidays, aiming to bring the people closer to the new faith while respecting their old customs. In the 8th century, Pope Gregory IV declared November 1st as All Saints Day, a day to honor all Christian saints. This was a significant move, as it provided a Christian alternative to the pagan festival of Samhain. This move was no coincidence. It was a strategic attempt to assimilate the existing pagan festival of Samhain into the Christian calendar. By doing so, the church hoped to ease the transition for the people, allowing them to continue their traditions under a new religious framework. The evening before All Saints Day became known as All Hallows' Eve, which eventually evolved into the name we know today, Halloween. This night was filled with activities that echoed the ancient Samhain traditions, but with a Christian twist. While the name changed, many of the traditions associated with Samhain lived on. The lighting of bonfires, a practice meant to ward off evil spirits, continued to be a central part of the celebrations. The belief in wandering spirits, the lighting of bonfires, and the wearing of costumes persisted, albeit with new Christian interpretations. These practices were now seen as ways to honor the saints and protect against evil. The line between the pagan and the Christian became blurred, creating a unique blend of traditions that continues to this day. This blending of customs allowed for a rich tapestry of cultural practices that have endured through the centuries. Halloween became a time not only to remember the saints, but also to confront the mysteries of life and death that had captivated people for centuries. The themes of mortality and the afterlife, central to both Samhain and All Saints Day, found a common ground in this new celebration. 
the ancient fears and superstitions associated with Samhain found new expression in the Christian era. These elements added a layer of depth and intrigue to the holiday, making it a time of reflection, celebration, and a bit of fright. Section 4, Trick or Treat, From Souls to Sweets One of the most beloved Halloween traditions, particularly among children, is trick-or-treating. This annual event sees kids donning a variety of costumes, from spooky ghosts to their favorite superheroes and venturing out into the night with bags in hand, ready to collect as many sweets as possible. But this light-hearted custom has surprisingly somber roots. The origins of trick-or-treating are far from the cheerful, candy-filled evenings we know today. It can be traced back to the medieval practice of souling, a tradition that was both solemn and spiritual. During All Souls Day on November 2nd, poor citizens would go door to door, offering prayers for the dead in exchange for food or money. This practice was a way for the living to help the souls of the deceased find peace in the afterlife. These soulers believed that their prayers would help the deceased find peace in the afterlife. The act of praying for the dead was seen as a noble and necessary duty, ensuring that the spirits of the departed could rest in peace. Over time, this practice evolved into the tradition of children dressing up in costumes and going door to door asking for treats. The transformation from a solemn ritual to a festive activity reflects the changing nature of cultural traditions. The phrase trick or treat itself is thought to have originated in the early 20th century possibly from a 1927 newspaper article mentioning children threatening to play a trick if they weren't given a treat. This playful threat added an element of fun and mischief to the tradition. Today, trick-or-treating is a far cry from its solemn origins. The modern celebration is filled with laughter, excitement, and an abundance of candy, making it a highlight of the Halloween season for many children. It's a time for kids to dress up in their favorite costumes, indulge in sugary treats, and enjoy the playful spirit of Halloween. The joy of collecting candy and showing off creative costumes brings communities together in a shared celebration. However, the act of going door to door, receiving offerings from the community, still echoes the ancient practice of appeasing spirits and ensuring good fortune. The communal aspect of trick-or-treating fosters a sense of connection and goodwill among neighbors. The ghosts of Halloween's past linger on in this beloved tradition. While the focus has shifted to fun and festivity, the echoes of its historical roots remind us of the deeper spiritual origins of this cherished custom. Section 5, The Glowing Grin of the Jack-O-Lantern. Section 6, The Allure of Costumes.